Hello friends, uh, my name is Timothy Trespass and I consider myself a targeted individual. For those of you who don't yet know what that is, <coughs> a targeted individual is somebody who has been chosen by whatever means for secret non-consensual human experimentation, uh, MK Ultra style mind control, Morgellons, nano biotechnological implants, and microwave um, mind control, as well as non lethal and uh, coercive weapons technology testing and utilization. Um, I'm making this video now uh, just to try to express. Uh, what I'm going through at this very moment. Um, it's really hard to describe. It's like, uh, okay, neurological symptoms, uh, perception and cognition symptoms, um, I feel as though my head is in a microwave oven, basically. <laughs> I feel as though, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I can't even, there's nothing to describe this other than perhaps uh, a large um, uh, intravenous dose of liquid LSD, perhaps. You know, like, uh, 30 or 40 seconds of the <laughs> that that would provide your mind um, the type of thing that perhaps uh, rapid changes in air pressure altitude would afford you uh, without the ear popping uh, blurry vision almost as though I'm breathing nitrous oxide uh, my perception becomes tunneled and uh, panic attacks, horrible, horrible panic attack. Um, you know, I I can't really see the size of my pupils, whether they're they look okay. There's been times where my one of my pupils was like blown. It was you could see it smeared all around the bottom um, and there was blood and stuff but through the grace of God that was healed um, yes these are extremely unpleasant moments and um, since I don't have any equipment to monitor uh, electromagnetic pulsing or radio frequency you know energy um, one has to just assume that it's one of several things um, that it is uh, you know the body's failing um, I imagine that with Morgellons if the research I'm reading is true about fibers uh, growing in your bloodstream and throughout your body and the uh, Norcalin's organism using the taking the iron out of your hemoglobin, thus leaving exploded red blood cells. And um, I've looked at my blood. We've seen the video of my blood, and it looks like a kaleidoscopic nightmare of goo <laughs> cells. I mean, it doesn't look like healthy blood that I've ever seen. And so I have to imagine that the lack of oxygen transport and these fibers, you know, who knows, are they going through the brain? I would have to imagine they're going through the brain. Uh, I haven't been tested for Lyme's disease, Lyme disease. A lot of people with more gallons find out they're positive for Lyme disease. Um, I haven't been tested for heavy metals. In fact, I haven't been tested for anything because every time I get tested for anything, they basically don't do anything and I never see the results and when I do, they're nothing <laughs> abnormal. So. Um, it's one of these things that, that uh, 
you know, come on, the medical profession, there are a few people out there who are brave enough and are interested enough and care enough about human life to want to determine what this is and the effect it's having on people and how to stop it. But for the most part, as we have seen, those of us who are victims and are suffering, we have little to no, or most of us absolutely no help from officials, from doctors, from hospitals, from government, from police organizations, from health professionals, from anything. You know, and trying to explain to your doctor what's been happening when they refuse to even look, <laughs> you know. I mean, we walked into the emergency room covered in sores. Um, Petra had a big red thing in her eye. Something had jumped into her eye. Some huge nematode thing. It was all red and wet. And uh, We had a big jars of all these crazy bugs we had been pulling out of our skin. And this doctor refused to even look. He, he didn't even, he didn't even want to, I mean, he wouldn't even glance in the direction of the jar. You know, and he told us some story about how his crazy old father claims he has bugs coming out of him, but, but maybe it's just pus. <laughs> and like, maybe your father's not so crazy after all, you liar. Um, I've seen a lot of lying in the medical profession. We've seen a lot of lying you know, throughout anyone that that, that uh, works with this in any professional capacity. Anyway, I feel like I'm having like mini strokes or mini something. It's not seizure activity quite yet, but it's piercing, pulsing headaches and um, the nausea. It comes on instantaneously, almost like you've been hit with an active denial weapon. Uh, you feel the sudden heating of your body uh, and rapid nausea, almost vomiting. And for me, that usually means, I don't know, toxins, and poison, or, you know, bad max. Max broke my lamp. Now I gotta fix it. Anyway, um, <coughs> um, I don't know. I guess I have a lot to come to terms with. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I want to say that I'm just not comfortable saying, and um. For me, that says a lot because I'm pretty much comfortable getting naked on YouTube. You know, I'm like, here I am. This is me. I have nothing left to lose, except for uh, well, this is what I'm wrestling with. You know, um, yeah, I, I'm at a point now in this process. Um, where I'm really feeling, and I'm sure this is right, what they want, you know, like feeling completely ungrounded, unsure, insecure. Um, I was thinking about this a lot. It's like the the innocence when you when you lose your innocence as a child. If you remember back to what it was like to when you were little before bad stuff happened and when you were actually free and happy and had no guilt and no baggage yet, you know, to drag around with you. Um, then once that changes, it's, it's different, you know. Um, I don't know, perhaps it's me, but I was born in 1966, and it seems to me like my generation, or a lot of people from my generation were, it was just me, you know, I don't know, it's like we didn't have the, the, any rituals to say that we were adults, 
we didn't have I don't know I guess maybe it's just me because I had hopes and dreams and plans and all that stuff and and you know, that wasn't what was going to happen in my life so uh, coming to terms with the fact that you were Existence somehow, you know, causes millions of dollars worth of apparatus, machinery, and personnel to be, you know, put into action over many, many years, long term plans, and, and, you know, systematic, I don't know. Um, yes, and this, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some kind of stability <laughs> and you don't get stability from external things anymore because they've disallowed that for me. It's like, a, you know, what can I hold on to? My place to live, my stuff, my, my, you know, physical body, my health, my intellect. You know, I'm watching all of these things change and decline. And of course, life is a, is not a static process. You know, but. <sighs> I was raised in America as an American, um, and we were fed very specific information. We were led to believe very specific things that were not true. Um, we were told over and over again who we could trust and and why and what it was all about and where we were going with this and it was all lies um, I heard a story in the news today about a billionaire who was sold two cases of wine that was not what it was purported to be and I think he spent uh, $35,000 or something on the 380000 he spent on the wine and he, uh, no he said, said billionaire and uh, yeah and so he sued the man who sold him the wine, uh, the man who was not allowed to present his defense that he was sold the wine as a fake, you know, that he was duped as well. So the jury awarded the billionaire $12 million in punitive damages for buying some wine that wasn't what it was supposed to be. Now, was this article designed to infuriate people who are... are can barely, you know, pay their rent. You know, do we do we feel happy for the billionaire? Should we celebrate his legal victory, his justice? I mean, it's Yeah, that's the other thing. They they wouldn't let him tell the jury that he told the man who bought the wine, if there's any problem with it, simply bring it back and I'll refund all your money. So he is going to appeal, but I mean, think about what that story represents and who they're 
selling it to, you know. Yeah. And then you start thinking about... I mean, why do they even put that story in the news? Because they wanted us to get upset about it. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.